Well, the enemy swayed them out. Now the only thing that they're relying on, they start making excuses, compromise, and get lazy and go, well, I don't drink anymore, but uh, uh, I, 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 I'm saved. When two weeks ago they were fighting and warring, now they're back out from the most holy place out to the outer court. Because the enemy sways you out of the chambers. I'm telling you, everything revolves around the tabernacle of God. Everything. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Read it with me. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the hearts of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his what? Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of the man except the spirit of the man which is in him? So he only knows things of the carnal, doesn't he? The carnal man. But the Spirit reveals things to us, but you've got to be in the Spirit to get it. And you've got to be, under, be able to understand the eternal language that the Spirit is speaking as he interprets it for us. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, hello, but the Spirit who is from God that we might what? Know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Then why don't people know the things that are freely given to them by God? Because they're still caught in the outer court chamber and they only understand the salvation message. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing what? Spiritual things with spiritual. But the carnal man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. That's why sometimes you're talking to someone, you're trying to, you know, speak to them in an eternal language because these are the words that are life, and they're looking at you like, what? Then you got to stop. Okay, Lord, how do I do this? Get him a teaching. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why? Because as I begin to listen to the teaching, it begins to break. It begins to draw them. It begins to open. And they'll at least be able to get something and thirst and hunger to get into the next chamber. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned, discerned, understood. Has everybody got it? The Holy Spirit interprets to us the priestly language, doesn't he? He interprets to us the things of God. Man, I, I, I don't, sometimes I don't know how to put things in words, but I can only share with you the essential of getting this understood tonight because you're going to need to communicate with a lot of people and you're going to find out that they can't understand what you're saying because you speak another language. You do not speak a temporary language. You speak an eternal language. That's why when you go to places, you might be at a place of work. You might be at a place. You might go back uh, and say hello to your family, and they're all there doing all their life. <laughs> and you're looking, and you ain't got nothing to say. Well, what do you got to say? Repent and try again, man. You know? <laughs> so you can tell them. You got a demon and many. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 14. Praise God. First Corinthians 14. The problem that when people only understand the salvation language. They're in danger because they actually believe that they're saved. Yet they fornicate, 
Are you listening? And because I'm saved, Jesus paid the price. Yes, he paid the price for you to get out of that court and get in the next one. Hallelujah. The outer court is a danger court. It's dangerous. The outer court is only supposed to be a place of quickness. In, out. 1 Corinthians 14, uh, verse 1. Would you read it with me? Pursue love and what? Desire. I want to say desire. Spiritual gifts. Uh-uh. Desire. You don't have a desire for spiritual gifts? You don't get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Because if there's not a desire of the gifts of the Spirit... You won't get baptized in the Holy Ghost. That's why you must have a desire to speak in tongues. You must have a desire to move in the gifts of the Spirit. You must have a desire. Without that desire, you don't get it. And then people go, oh, I ain't got it yet. Well, do you have a desire? Well, if God wills, oh, you outer quarter, you. I want to set the whole outer court on fire so they got to run into the next court. When I call fire down, I'm calling it out. <laughs> yeah! Papa, burn the whole first court off, man, so everybody runs to the next one. The problem is, when it happens, they run the outer court, outer darkness, instead of the next chamber. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm running to the world. Salvation is too tough. I don't understand any of this. Then you ask for it. Lord, grant me the desires. I want to please you. See, if you don't, if you don't want to know him, he's not going to force it on you. That's why when we get in trouble, we go to God. Oh, Lord, help. Okay, good. Get in the second chamber. You've been living in the outer chamber for so long, man. You're going to become the official sacrifice if you don't get out of there. <laughs> Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. But especially that you may prophesy. Wow. Prophesying means you're speaking eternal language. But he who speaks in a tongue, does not speak to men. Thank God you don't have to speak to your neighbor. Just slap them. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to who? God. Hallelujah. Everybody wants to speak to God. Amen. Everybody wants to see God, speak to God, have a conversation. But they're not willing to pick up the phone. It's in the second chamber. It's called a hotline. However, oh, for he speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands him. Isn't that wonderful? However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries, revelations. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. In other words, to the church, prophesying. You're speaking eternal. In other words, you are being prophesied right now over. Prophecy isn't just about things that are future. It's when God is speaking through his servants and bringing eternal language and impartation into you. What is coming from out of this dude's mouth is what's been prayed in the Spirit and then interpreted by the Spirit and through to you. Has everybody got it? Somehow, I went for a long pass and I caught the anointing. <laughs> I 
And I began to pray in the Spirit, and then the Holy Spirit imparted it. I didn't know what was what. He knew the question already. He answered it. And by answering it, he be said, now feed my sheep. Feed my sheep with my eternal language. Feed my sheep with my eternal words. This is my food. You're getting fed just as I am right now. Does everybody understand? And it's a good meal. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. In verse 5. I wish, I desire, you all spoke with tongues. In other words, I wish you'd all get in the second chamber. But even more that you prophesied, for he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless what? Indeed, he what? Interprets tongues. In other words, you are interpreting now. That's warrior. Third chamber. That the church may receive what? Edification. Go to verse 15. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the what? Spirit, and I will also pray with the what? Understanding. In other words, I will pray in the eternal language to the Father, and I will speak the eternal language to men. And I will sing in the Spirit, and I will also sing with the understanding. Eternal language in the temporary realm, but interpreted by the Holy Spirit. Or what the Holy Spirit does is he's the translator. Amen? With the temporary words. He uses temporary words to bring across. But they're actually eternal words and a temporary. There are temporary words. But inside these temporary words is eternal meanings, eternal mysteries, eternal message. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Is everybody with me? Praise God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and with met much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with what? Persuasive words of human understanding but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Oh, how true. Not in human wisdom, but in eternal language, didn't he? He spoke to them in an eternal language because in the eternal language it produces a manifestation of change. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 